Welcome to Blueprint IoT. Raspberry Pi just dropped a new product, the Pi 500 Plus. In this video, we will quickly check out what's new, how we're doing with the ports, and if anything changed performance-wise despite the obvious things. So let's dive right into it. First picture here is the official picture from the Raspberry Pi website. Let's run through the obvious changes very quickly. Yes, we got a mechanical keyboard here. And yes, it has an LED RGB backlit that you can play with as much as you want. Another thing that you can spot here on the circuit board is an SSD by Raspberry Pi with 256 gigs here. We will come back to this in a second. So let's take a look on the ports. Here we will start with the Raspberry Pi 400 model as this is the like the base that we can refer to. Back then we had typical 40 pin GPIO header from Raspberry Pi. Never changed the pin out here from all the versions 400, 500 and 500 plus. We had a micro SD card slot where you had to put on your operating system. You could do it on USB, but typically you would do it on a fast micro SD card. You had the two micro HDMIs, USB-C for power, two times USB 3.0 and still keeping one times USB 2.0 in case you want to use any old style devices, maybe a mouse, whatever, and you had a gigabit ethernet. Moving on to the Pi 500, I actually totally missed that they launched the Pi 500. It was not very much innovating on the packaging side, but obviously the internals changed a lot. But also here on the port side, nothing changed basically. Still the two times micro HDMI, the gigabit was there. They just changed a little bit the arrangement as you can see, but nothing changed here from the count of ports or something like this. Finally arriving at the 500 plus model, unfortunately there is not yet the official pinout in the data sheet, but we got this little drawing here of the back and you can see that also nothing changed here really. Why? So basically it's a still the same Raspberry Pi 5 inside of the keyboard and not a new version of the Pi. That's why it's also the, still the 500, just a plus to indicate a little bit of an extra features. But you can see also the arrangement still stayed the same. Interesting here is that they kept the micro SD slot because kind of you have the SSD capabilities now as we saw on the, on the official picture of the, of the circuit board, but still keeping the micro SD card slot. We will come back to this later, but you still have this uh, possibility and you don't need to go with the big SSD or you could actually split between operating system here, storage there. But let's finally take a look on the key performance metrics. So for this, I want to take a look at the Pi 400, Pi 500, the new Pi 500 Plus, and finally also the Pi 5, because basically the Pi 5 is what is inside the Pi 500 and 500 Plus. So to start with, that's an easy one. They all come basically with the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi capabilities, something I always appreciated about the Pi. With the Pi 5 over the Pi 4, they changed a bunch of stuff on the chip side uh, in terms of the wireless connectivity, but all of them have the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz band for Wi-Fi, and all of them have Bluetooth capabilities. But let's take a look on the numbers, starting with the price point. Those price points refer to Germany, and basically Central Europe is all over the same, at least the Eurozone, toast, so to speak. Obviously those prices will be different a little bit in pound from the UK where Raspberry Pi is located, or in the US, in US dollars. So 75 at the moment, I just checked now, you can get the Pi 400 uh, module. Pi 500, you pay around 110, which is kind of matching with what Raspberry Pi is advertising on their website. For the Pi 500 Plus, I don't have the real number here. There's not yet a trader available that's or dealership that's basically giving you any details on the pricing. It will be around 200 euros, most likely a bit above 200 euros as they're claiming 200 pounds. So let's see how this goes, but roughly around the 200 euro mark, which seems quite much more expensive, but you will see that's actually you're getting quite a bit extra performance or extra features for that, for that extra price. And finally, the Pi 5 with 135 euros in a specific configuration. We will get to this in a second. So starting with the Pi 400, you had four gigabytes of RAM included on the board. The Pi 4 came back then also in many different uh, RAM configurations, but in the Pi 400 module, it's always the four gigabytes, at least what I could find on my research. On the Pi 500, you got eight gigabytes of RAM. So that's already doubling 
your RAM, which is kind of already justifying the price increase in my opinion. And then moving on to the Pi 500 Plus comes now with 16 gigabytes of RAM, which I think is really Raspberry Pi here trying to push for using the Pi 500 Plus module as your desktop device, as your desktop computer. Maybe not the main device, but at least giving you a lot of room to play. The Pi 5, interestingly, obviously comes with many different RAM configurations, 2, 4, 8 and 16 gigabytes. For comparison, I chose the 16 gigabyte version here in terms of pricing to compare it properly to the Pi 500 Plus module. Obviously, you can get uh, the Pi 5 much cheaper with the lower RAM options, but to compare, you can see that you're basically paying a premium of 65 euros to get to the keyboard itself. I mean, the keyboard itself has also some value and you get all the mechanical keyboard in this case and you get all the LED backlight and some more features we come to in a second. If you compare the 5 to the 500 actually, it's, you can, of course, that's here the 16 gigs versus the 8 gigs, but there you can see you just pay 25 uh, euros less actually to um, get half the RAM, but also get the whole keyboard and everything. So I think the Pi 500 is still a good deal, but let me know in the comments if you think differently. A little bit of a boring one maybe, but the only metrics that we can really look at is the processing power, the CPU power, the Pi 400 came with 4 times 1.8 gigahertz and A72 ARM Cortex was deployed here. Moving on to the 500 and the 500 plus and 5 all come obviously with the same processor, 4 times 2.4 gigahertz and A76 ARM Cortex. So definitely a huge bump in power here and also in the frequency applied. Maybe the least important for the use case on desktop, but something I really love about the Pi modules here, the 400, 500 ones, are the GPIOs. You have the full 40 pin GPIO or 40 pin header. 28 of them are actually GPIOs for the data input output. They all work at 3.3 volts. I think that's really what makes the Pi 400 or 500 module so unique that you have your whole computer basically ready to throw in your backpack but you can also just connect sensors and actuators and all the nice stuff you want to play around and you just have a neat and tight, tight setup and yeah that's I think what I really appreciate about it uh, but obviously the Pi 5 or the Pi 4 and all the other um, Pi B models basically from a layout point of view or form factor point of view have all a bunch of other connectors for the additional displays, touchscreen displays and so on that are not accessible easily on the 400 and 500 modules. Nevertheless, I think for the 500 plus that's the least important information because obviously they are aiming for a bit of different target demographic or maybe same target demographic because maybe all the nerds in, in the makerspace like the LED backlight and the mechanical keyboard, but definitely for a different use case, maybe more of the desktop use case and maybe more on the, on the Linux side more on the coding side and maybe less on the hardware side. Personally, I would just be too afraid to basically fry my whole device by just plugging in a sensor on the wrong GPIO or something like that. Last but not least, very interesting, I think the most important innovation here, despite of the nice shiny backlit and stuff like this and the mechanical keyboard, I think it's all nice. But what really changed here for me is the storage options. While the Raspberry Pi 4 came with the SD card only, so you get only the option to have it on the SD card, the operating system and all your data, or via USB 3, connect any type of other uh, external drive. The Raspberry Pi 5 came with the innovation of the PCIe slot, which you can use to connect to an SSD, by, which comes by Raspberry Pi themselves, but you had to use an adapter, like an adapter board and head that you had to put on top of the Pi or next to it and then connect it to the PCIe interface. The Pi 500 has obviously the same hardware capabilities, but it's really a theoretical game here. Actually, they left some space on the circuit board where you could place the SSD, but it never shipped with an SSD in, inside and was never really advertised as such. So it's really just a theoretical option you had here. But now with the 500 plus, you not just have the opportunity to use it for the first time or to configure it. In this configuration, you get the 256 gigs in the board already mounted. So I think that's making this a really great deal in my opinion, not just because of mechanical keyboard, it's also extra added costs, 
but not just of the added RAM here, which is also very much appreciated, but 256 gigs is really a good storage. Think about phones, what you pay there for storage, and it's a fast SSD, and it's already built in, and you can run your operating system on it. It actually comes pre-installed with the operating system, but still, and that's the interesting bit, I think, about the SD card slot, that the micro SD card slot is still there, and you can still use it, and it Raspberry Pi claims, at least in the data sheet, that you also can install the operating system on the SD micro SD card still, and you can just switch um, what you want to use basically for, for, for booting, and you could also use the internal SSD just for like data or your data running your database or your media, media server where you store all your media on or something like this. Maybe most important and I think totally in line with the maker spirit is that it's plug and play. It's not needing an adapter. So also that I think if you factor in that you would need to buy an adapter head for the Raspberry Pi 5 to have the same capability. So that's already again some extra value here or cost safe for you as a user. But it's plug and play, so you check the, the instructions how to change it. It's really fairly easy. You just pop it open and then you can easily take the SSD out and insert a new one and off you go. So great capabilities here, really modular and really great value for the money, I think. That's all I have to say at the moment based on the information available on the website from Raspberry Pi. So I hope that's giving you a good overview. In case you have anything to add, Obviously, I didn't mention all the metrics here. There's so much more you could say about performance. Let me know down in the comment what you think I've, I missed, what would be important, or maybe I'm wrong with something. And please also let me know if you would be interested in a video about a teardown of the Raspberry Pi 400 model versus the 500 plus or even the 500 to do like a little bit of comparison on the teardown level, on the actual component level. Any case, thanks for watching and see you next time.